Layers of Fear is a psychological horror game that takes inspiration from both Amnesia and PT, the Silent Hills demo. It's a wonderfully executed horror game with tons of atmosphere and a lot to tell to its players. You take on the role of a famous painter in the early 1900s in his Victorian style household that appears to be empty with the only context being to finish it. Almost sounds like the premise to the end of a deadly Mortal Kombat fight. Am I right? <laughs> As I said before, the game is ripe with atmosphere and it feels very chilling, and it pulls it off very well despite its use of horror tropes. Mechanic-wise, you have an inventory reminiscent of a machine for pigs, and you really just open doors and drawers and floors and I don't fucking know, play it. I highly recommend this game, as it's one of the most creative and well-made indie horror games to come out as of recent. And with everything said, I would give this game an 8 out of 10. Now I'm going to move on to the plot analysis. And symbols. Story-wise, this game has a lot going on and is presented very well through notes and flashback during the gameplay. The story is full of symbolism and has some interesting themes within itself. One theme is self-actualization and reflection, looking on yourself to see who you really are and what decisions you've made, and taking responsibility for it all. This is implied through the game's use of mirrors. They're everywhere, seriously everywhere, especially in key places. The narrator has done some awful things, and he needs to realize that and accept reality for what it is. And that's another theme. Reality, what is real and what is not, and the game plays on this a lot. The main character is an unreliable narrator. He's also an alcoholic and quite possibly a substance abuser. He has a wife, a daughter, and they own a dog. Many things are implied throughout the game through painting, such as the narrator's neglect and abuse towards his wife, present as soon as the game starts through a painting to the player's right. Another theme is deterioration, the way that baggage can wear one down and ultimately destroy them. This is implied through the way the house goes to shit throughout the game. Maybe you shouldn't have fired that maid. Much of this can be learned in the opening minutes of the game. He's married, has a daughter, and a dog. He's abusive and his daughter is taken from him by the state. Wait, what? Who said anything about that? We learn about a department store fire and that the narrator is going through some hard times. And we then find out that his wife was in this fire and is horribly disfigured afterwards. This outlines the fact that the narrator treated her as an object, as something to be won. And once her beauty is gone, he becomes distant and focuses on his work. This is where the lines become very blurred story-wise. And we're told several things that are counteracted by symbolism and through the environment. To better explain this, I would like to present two timelines to you. One is the explicitly stated storyline and the other is the implied storyline. The explicitly stated storyline goes something like this. The narrator becomes well known for his painting and marries the woman in the game. The two have a baby not long after and the narrator gets a dog to keep the baby company. Years pass and the wife is badly burned in the department store fire. The narrator is in his office when he receives this call and rushes to the hospital, immediately asking if she can be fixed, afterwards saying, I... she will be devastated. <laughs> Hashtag acting. He no longer loves her as he once did and can only see a monster of her, bringing on her depression once again as the two grow more and more distant each day. She is pushed so far until she finally commits suicide in the bathroom with a kitchen knife and the narrator walks in to find this not long after. Their daughter is then taken from him and he attempts to kidnap her. At this point, he shaves her head and takes her ponytail to use as a brush. This gives him the idea of using his dead wife's body to fix her. Presumably, he rushes to her grave and steals her body, taking her back to his home and cutting off her leg, finger, flesh, and taking her eye for a witness. That sounds something like Outlast and fucking Witness or some shit. And this is where the game picks up. The implied storyline begins when the lines are blurred. The narrator walks in on his wife about to commit suicide and he does it himself. From here he either claims she's missing or reports it as a suicide, later digging her up again after taking his daughter's ponytail. Now he commits the murder as one of his other personalities, the one I call the rat, and him as the husband and father finds her dead in the bathtub afterwards, convincing himself that it was a suicide. In his rage he kills their dog either in a fight or more likely with his bare hands, and their daughter knows this. It's implied that he then murders his daughter as well, but there's less evidence supporting this. But it's heavily implied that he does. He then decides to fix his wife and use what's left of her to create a beautiful painting. The game represents the narrator's spiritual journey through his mind, and whether he forgives himself and moves on, stays delusional, or puts an end to it all is in our hands. For example, the encounters with the wife all give the narrator a chance to turn his back on her or come to her aid and suffer the pain she did for so long, but for her. To me, this is what defines the ending of the game. The narrator's compassion through us to decide his fate. It's all in his mind and we control him to help in his self-realization, as the mirrors all throughout the game suggest. But that's just a theory. A game theory! What the fuck are you doing? Are you did you, what? Did you seriously just say Wait. that? Are you no, I mean, it's, it's okay. I don't... 
Do you want us to get what fucking? I don't. You want us to get sued? No, it's fine. I'm sure. Do you want our YouTube channel to get taken down? What? <sighs> See you next time. Cool. That's a. Oh. Oh. Uh, God. I don't know. <laughs> Make Batman go away, please. What's that? No. Hey, don't do that. <laughs> can, can I? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't so bad. I can pull it up. What's behind door number two? Let's see it, folks. What? Place your bets. Place your bets. What, what is it? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be, guys? Oh, God. A female crying. That's hey, lovely. That's actually pretty good. Should I? Let's go ahead and not do that. <laughs>